Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Charles Savancy. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we got a pretty interesting show for you guys that we definitely want you guys to stick around for. But before we get into it, please make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, as you all know, uh, it was a very big game in the NBA last night, a few um, two, two playoff games with one between I believe the Knicks, the Cel uh, the Knicks and the, what is it, the Cleveland Cavaliers, I believe the Hawks and the Celtics played. And of course, we had the game I was looking forward to the most, and I'm sure most people were looking forward to. That was the Clippers versus Suns um, game. Now, going into this series, I'm one of the few people out there that believe that the Clippers have a chance at winning this series. And as a matter of fact, I picked the Clippers uh, to win this series. It was a, It was an unpopular position, and as a matter of fact, we put up a poll on our channel where we asked our audience, what do they think uh, in terms of this matchup, um, the Clippers facing the Phoenix Suns without Paul George and about 68% of them had the Clippers losing in that series. So our audience wasn't biased. Like, oh, it's a Clippers channel. No. People, <laughs> people gave their honest take. Going into game one, I think Kawhi Leonard had a masterful, masterful uh, performance. He had, an, he had incredible efficiency. And Russell Westbrook pretty much did it all um, for for the for the Clippers, and the Clippers are able to get a very close uh, win and basically steal Game One. Now going into yesterday's game, um, I had a feeling that the Clippers could win that game, but I th I thought that um, you know the Suns were going to be playing desperation basketball, and ultimately they needed to get that game. Uh, the Clippers played them pretty closely all throughout the game, but um, what I noticed from the onset was that the, what is it, the um, Phoenix Suns decided that they were going to double Kawhi Leonard, right, um, all throughout that game. And it made it pretty difficult for him to get to his spots and get uh, easy looks, which meant that if you're going to be doubling Kawhi um, and you don't have a Paul George on the floor, it now forces other guys to make shots. Guys like Russell Westbrook, and to his credit, he was hitting threes. Eric Gordon, he was a bit um, iffy in the beginning of the game. But nevertheless, they played them. Uh, what is it? Pretty close. Then we got to the second half uh, of the game. And actually, before the first half finished, the Phoenix Suns stormed back. And then Devin Booker, Devin Booker hit a three, I believe, at the buzzer uh, to basically tie the game 59-59 going into, um, what is it, halftime. Then they came back and it was kind of a back and forth game. And, uh, you know, but ultimately, the Phoenix Suns were ultimately able to prevail. Now, now that this series is shifting towards um what is it la they're going to be going back to la there's some things that i noticed that the suns were able to exploit and basically hurt the clippers all throughout their game that i think the clippers need to fix right and there's and, and there's a number there's a big issue i believe the biggest issue that the clippers need to solve in order for them to remain competitive in this series but before we get into that issue this video is brought to you by sponsor aura who's also the official sponsor of the T-Wolves. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is today? It's identity theft. Imagine trying to log into your email only to see that your password has been changed. Then you start getting weird notifications from your bank and credit cards only to find out that all of your personal and sensitive information has been totally compromised. If you think it can happen to you and your family, just know that in 2020, over 49 million Americans were victims to identity theft, costing them a combined $56 billion. That is why we are excited to partner with Aura, who's the sponsor of this video. Aura is the number one identity theft and financial fraud protection. Aura monitors the dark web and alerts you if any of your passwords and accounts have been breached. And funny enough, after using Aura, I discovered some of my credentials were floating around in the dark web and the app showed me exactly when and where the breach happened. In addition, Aura allows you to set spending alerts and they'll notify you of any suspicious transactions. Aura is four times faster than any of its competitors in alerting you if someone is trying to open a credit card or obtain a loan using your name. And remember this, every 14 seconds, someone becomes a victim of identity fraud. Don't let it happen to you. Now click the link in the description and try Aura for free for two weeks and see if any of you or your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial at Aura.com slash Dreamers Pro. And when you try Aura, by using the link in the description below. Also know that you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So let me just get down to some of the problem areas uh, for the Clippers and things I believe they need to address. Um, as you all know, the Suns were able to make adjustments and really that's what the playoffs are all about. Um, what I noticed, however, was the Clippers, given the fact that they wanted to play Avitsa Zubak and they wanted to ensure that they had the rebounding edge because they were able to basically 
out rebound the Phoenix Suns in game one. If I look at this game, let me just look at the total rebounds the Clippers got. In, okay, the, the Phoenix Suns got 35 rebounds in game one, and the Clippers got how many rebounds? 32 rebounds also shows you the amount of shots that these teams were making. So what I noticed was, and the commentators covering the game, they also noticed this as well, Stan Van Gundy, um, the, the Suns were basically attacking the Clippers in the drop coverage, right? So whenever they set the pick and roll um, and Zubak was the guy, they would, you know, whenever they got the switch, Zubak was always sagging into the paint. You know, to ensure that he stay close, he you know he stays within, um, you know, arm's length of the guy that's rolling to the basket. And Devin Booker, uh, what is it, Chris Paul, and these guys were exploiting that time after time after time, right? And it was something that really hurt the Clippers. And I think that it's something that the Clippers are going to need to find a way to address. Now, some people say, well, instead of dropping on those coverages, why don't they just switch? Well, if you switch, you now have another problem because whoever's switching needs to be able to defend the guy that he's switching onto. And Avitsa Zubak, if you start doing that, you're going to put the Clippers on an island. And this is exactly how Luka Doncic was able to basically exploit the Clippers' defense. Luka was not Luka was not scoring on Kawhi or PG as much. What he was doing was he was either scoring on the drop. Or he would post up, or, he, or when he, whenever he got the switch, he was scoring guys like Reggie Jackson, guys are not, that are not really good defenders, or guys that are smaller than them, like Patrick Beverly. And therefore, Ty Lue had to bench Patrick Beverly in that series. So I think if the Clippers are going to try to eliminate that drop coverage and stop giving them that look, because you saw it got DeAndre Ayton open a lot at the top of the, uh, what is it, at the top of the paint, where he was just hitting those jumpers, those mid range jumpers. I think that Ty Lu may need to consider going to a small ball uh, lineup and then um, imploring his players to now play more uh, aggressive defense and also get them to crash the uh, what is it uh, the, the boards more than usual, right? You saw Russell Westbrook in Game One. I think got five offensive rebounds. They're going to need they, they, they're going to need to be able to crash the glass if you're going to go small, right? And also. If they now get a smaller guy on the court like Robert Covington, who's a pretty big guy, I believe he's like six foot nine or so, six foot eight, six foot nine, and DeAndre Ayton tries to exploit that matchup by doubling him, the, the Clippers are going to need to be able to send a double and then recover quickly back to their man, right? But they need to change that look because it's because it's something that Devin Booker and these guys were able to exploit. Devin Booker was hitting those threes because if it's a Zubac was sagging backwards. So that's something else that I think the Clippers need to um, address, which I'm which I'm 100% sure that Tyron Lue is going to do that. Another thing I think uh, is worth looking at in terms of adjustments going into the next game is finding ways to get Kawhi Leonard easier shots. And I think the only way that the Clippers are going to be able to do that is they're going to have to make the Suns defense pay for doubling Kawhi because they're going to double him. Because if you don't double Kawhi, as Stan Van Gundy said, he's, he's going he's to light these boys up. He's going to light them up, um, number one, because of his efficiency. So he's going to light them up. If you look at Kawhi Leonard's efficiency yesterday, I don't want to focus too much on his numbers because he lost. Um, but if you look at his efficiency, uh, what was his numbers yesterday? Kawhi Leonard shot 55% from the field, 60% from three, 85% uh, from the free throw line. And even though he had all of those cover, he had all those doubles, he did have three turnovers. And he had a turnover late in the game. Uh, same thing with Russell Westbrook. But um, the other Clippers players are going to need to come along and hit some shots. And this is where you see the Clippers miss Paul George, right? This is where they miss Paul George because if the Suns are doubling Kawhi, you're going to leave Paul George open. He's going to roast you for, uh, from, for, for three. So he's going to make you pay. But in this case, you're doubling, you're doubling off of Kawhi and now forces players like Russell Westbrook, Terrence Mann, Eric Gordon to make threes. Now, Eric Gordon shot 44% from the three last night. But he went four of nine, right? It would, it would have been nice to see him be just a little bit more efficient from the three-point line. Another guy that really missed a lot of shots was Nicholas Batum. Nicholas Batum finished that game. I don't even think he scored a point that game. Nicholas Batum finished the game with zero points. And he went 0 of 4 from three. He was another guy that would need to hit shots. And hopefully, these guys can start hitting shots going home, right? Um, to me, even though after watching that game, I still believe that Kawhi Leonard is the best player on the, on the court. 
Um, to be quite honest with you, I think he's the best player uh, on the court. I think he's better than KD. I absolutely think he's better than um, Devin Booker just because of what he gives you on both sides of the floor. Right. And if and, and if Paul George were there <laughs> and Kawhi Leonard, you basically you, and, and the Phoenix Suns were not able to double him. I mean, it would it, he would toast these guys. Right. But because they can double him, I think uh, you have issues. Now, some people say, but Kawhi Leonard's better than Kevin Durant. Absolutely. He's better than Kevin Durant. He's just as efficient a score as KD. Now, KD is more of a volume shooter. He's going to take more shots, but he's just as efficient as Kevin Durant. And Kawhi gives you on defense what no other player on that court can give you. And I think his defense is what sets him apart. I think it's his defense and his efficiency and his IQ. That's what sets him apart from every single player on the court. Kawhi is the best player in the series. I'm not even up here to ready to listen to anybody tell me some, some nonsense about that. He's the best player in the series. Um, but uh, I think the Clippers are going to need to be able to figure this out. I still think they have a shot to win this series, but they're going to have to make adjustments, especially to the pick and roll coverage um, that they're going to be showing the Suns. They're going to have to give them different looks on defense, but I trust Tyron Lue and his coaching staff to be able to make the appropriate adjustments. I've seen him do it time and time and time again, but I expect them to do something different, especially with the lineup. They may start off with a Vitsa Zubak, but if they see that the Phoenix Suns exploiting them, trust and believe that Ty Lue is going to make an adjustment. So these are my thoughts and opinions. Uh, whatever you guys think, leave your thoughts in the comment section, and we catch you guys on the next show.